My name is Bren Antrim. I'm one of the reference librarians here. Welcome to the workshop. The workshop today is um, basically a tour of research from beginning to figure out your topic through um, some basic evaluation information to talking about different resources, both book and article resources. And I'm going to walk you through all of that, plus some things that you can find on the Santa Monica College Library website to help you along the way. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you and start with that. Um, I am teaching this on my own, so um, I'm asking that everyone have their microphone muted because I have the attention span of a squirrel and um, I will get easily distracted if I'm answering questions or hearing uh, noises. So um, what I would like you to do is use the chat to ask questions and I will uh, monitor chat as we go. So if you have questions, I can take a look at it um, and answer those questions as we go. Okay. <clears throat> now, before we begin the research process, there are some resources on the SMC Library website that can help you. I'm going to start with that. If at any time during your research you feel like you're getting stuck and you need to get unstuck, we have 24-7 reference chat. This chat is manned by a Santa Monica College librarian at any time that the library would otherwise have been open were we not closed for the pandemic. And during times that we would otherwise be closed, um, it is manned by librarians from other colleges and universities. So at any time when you go to SMC library homepage and you request chat, which on the library homepage is accessed via this button right here, you're talking to a college or university librarian um, who could help you get unstuck. Another helpful resource on the library homepage is library guides or live guides. Those cover a variety of different topics, um, including um, specific disciplines, um, current events, and a frequently asked questions. So say, for example, you need to find out information about coronavirus. You can go to our live guide on coronavirus, and it will show you help that you can use outside of SMC for your research to complement your research that you do on our library website. You'll also find links at Santa Monica College to help you, some legitimate sources for statistics on the pandemic, and resources individually as a student that you might find useful or helpful. Finally, we have a variety of um, workshop videos and other videos like uh, tours that have been put on a YouTube channel. I um, mean, you can... Google SMC, not SMC, Santa Monica College Library um, on the video search for YouTube and come up with these. And as you notice, we have a homepage tour, which goes more into depth of what you'll find at the homepage. Workshops like one on um, a fake news um, and how to use the Modern Language Association citation style, and even short videos like how to use um, your Microsoft Word to make a hanging indent when you make your work cited. So there's a variety of different resources on YouTube on our channel that you can use as well. So heading forward, if I were a student and I were coming in and say I'm in English one and I have to do a research essay on some social issue and my teacher in an attempt to be helpful has said, pick something that really speaks to you that you're very interested in. And my brain explodes because I'm interested in so many different things. Where do I start? Well, a lot of students have this problem. So where we recommend starting, if you don't really have any idea and you just want to get started on this and, and put some order to your thoughts, is to use the Opposing Viewpoints database on the Santa Monica College Library homepage as a research topic finder. And these are the steps to do that. You literally just, and I'll show you this as well, mouse over student services and click on the library to get to our homepage. Click on research topics on the left-hand side open up the database, pick a topic, start reading about it with an overview that I'll show you, and explore the various resources that are in Opposing Viewpoints to get you started. Keeping in mind, my instructor would not want me to use only one database, only one resource, no matter how good and broad and wide ranging it is. So this would be my beginning point. And here I want to add a couple of basic research tips as well. Um, one is when you do research, um, Search terms are incredibly important, but they're not always easy to find. 
So when you first start your research, think broadly and then narrow it down as you get closer and closer and closer to what you actually want to write about. Another thing is um, when you're researching, your brain thinks differently when it's searching than it does when it's assimilating information and coming to conclusions and writing. So you want to get a lot of varied research before you take a break and start looking at it in writing. So look at how many your instructor requires as your minimum number of articles. And if they say you have to have five articles, find 10. Then after you find those 10, take a break and let your brain relax for a moment or two. Then start looking at the articles and trying to figure out, are there threads that go through them? Are there themes that come up? Is there something here that really catches my interest that I want to really pursue? Because research, if you do it right, takes you places you don't expect. And that's sort of the joy of doing research. Um, it can also be a frustration, <laughs> but I prefer to think of it as a joy. And the final research tip at this point is don't read everything as you come to it, because if you do, your brain will get tired, especially if you're reading scholarly journal articles. Instead, take a look at it, read the abstract, and I'll talk more about this when we get to periodicals. And if it looks good, email it to yourself and then just keep searching, okay? So be sort of task focused when you do this. Um, and when you're doing searching, really think about the searching part of it. So what does it look like when you go looking to find a topic? When you head into the library homepage, the way to get to the library itself is to mouse over student services and click on library between health and the police. The other way is to actually click on student services and we're in the middle of the page listed alphabetically between inter internships and the ombudsperson. So when you click on the library, there's a lot of information available to you. Start left to right. Over here on the left hand side under doing research, there's a link for research topics. So if you head into that, the server will eventually catch up. And it gives you a list of all sorts of research topics. Now, Posing Viewpoints is actually a database based on books. But what these books are, are pro-con essays. So they're arguments for and against things. And then when it was put into the database, they expanded that and added even more to it. So if I scroll down here, anything that has been recently updated will show me that. And as you see, there are a lot of various topics that I could pick. Again, could be a little overwhelming, but if I find something that looks interesting, say for example, civil rights, I click on that and it opens up first an overview of the topic that gives you a little bit of background. Then below that, it links you to specific pro-con es um, essays they think are really important. Viewpoints, which are all of those pro-con essays, and notice there's about you know, 500 of them. Some academic journal articles, biographies of people that are important to it, some podcasts, some websites that you can click out to, and infographics, news articles, primary sources, often very important, particularly if you're in history class, some images, some magazines, reference our books, some videos, some statistics, and topics that are related to this one. So if you find as you're looking through this, that this is close to what you want, but not exactly what you want, you could click on related topics and explore other things until you find one that looks interesting. This background and this information, many students think, oh, that's my whole paper. Please be wary of getting all of your information from one source, regardless of what that source is. Different information sources have different perspectives, different slants, different information. I always recommend that you try at least three databases, and I'm going to show you four today, in fact. So if I have a topic in mind, and my topic here is civil rights, then I can go in and I can go back to my research process. With my broad topic that I'm eventually going to narrow down, where do I actually find more information to fill that out, to get the information I need 
to make some conclusions and to write about it. We always recommend starting broadly and getting more and more and more narrow. Start in the catalog to get books because books are kind of unique as an academic tool. They assume you don't know anything about your topic. So if you do know stuff about your topic, but you have holes in your information and you don't know what you don't know, you can skim through these books, fill those holes, and sort of solidify the foundation underneath you. So then you can continue on with a solid understanding because you're not doing research to write a paper. I know that sounds weird, but you're actually doing research to understand a topic. And once you understand that topic, then you can write about it intelligently, right? Books also give you terms. They give you search words. They tell you how people in the discipline talk about that topic. What is being talked about? What isn't being talked about? So you can write down some of those terms and then use those in the databases to find articles that are specific. And there are some differences between books and databases and articles that I'll talk about a little bit more later. Finally, you'll head to the web to get those pieces of information that are not yet in books or have not made articles or have not necessarily made the news. Um, fast breaking news, uh, scholarly information that's in the process of being created, nonprofit or not for profit information, governmental information. The one major thing that you need to do on the web is evaluate where your information comes from to the best of your ability. And you're looking for authority. Authority means whoever is talking about that is actually an expert in that. Okay. And that is the difference between research and anecdote. I'll talk about that a little bit more in just a sec. Basically, when looking for authority, you're looking for who is responsible for the information, what are they actually saying, and to the best you can determine, why are they saying it? What is their motive? Look for information coming from experts doing or reporting on research. When they're doing research, it's primary. When they're reporting on it, it's secondary. Avoid celebrities who often are not experts in that area, but they're saying things that other people um, have essentially told them to say. Um, and you always want to go to the source. You don't want to rely on layers to get you your information. Avoid advertisements in order to sell you things. Of course, they have to hide some things and they have to beef up other things. Um, and avoid politicians information because politicians are speaking for particular purposes but they are not necessarily experts in that area. Um, and they are presenting things much like advertisements to bring forward a particular um, perspective, right? Check your facts. If someone quotes something and you really want to see what that is, check that something, see if you can find the original and read it in context. Okay. And this is heading back to anecdotes and opinions. Look for research because research deliberately does not say, we know this. Research says, we think this, and we're going to go out and test it over and over and over again to see if we get the same answer or if the answer changes. Anecdotes can't be generalized that way, the way that research can. They only apply really to the person that's speaking them, to the family that's speaking them, because it's their lived experience. So they are powerful, because as humans, we connect to each other through storytelling. So it's often a good way to open up a topic. But you want to support your research with solid information that goes across multiple people and communities. Okay. And opinions, well, that's all they are. They are opinions. And they vary from person to person. Some are more informed than others. So make sure that you're not taken in accidentally by an uninformed opinion. So when you're looking for ebooks, how do you do it? The library is closed. You can't get a book right now. Well, we have ebooks. We have about 65,000 ebooks, in fact. Um, when you go to look for them, you have to log in with Canvas if you've not already logged into the database. Um, and when you find them, if it has a call number, which is an alphanumeric code that's like an address for the book, that's in print. And right now, while the library is closed for the pandemic, you can't actually get hold of those, but you can get the ebooks. Okay. Regarding your textbooks, as a side note, talk to your instructor about textbooks. Okay. And if you can't find what you're looking for, 
chat with us using Ask a Librarian, and we will help get you through the process of finding what you need to do your research. So this is a sample search, finding eBooks in the catalog. And I'll give you a second to take a look at this, and then we're going to walk through it together, and I'll show you how it works in real life. You're going to head into databases, click on ebooks, pick an ebook database. The ebooks that are listed at that point either are primarily or substantively ebooks and may also include other information. So if your instructor has said that you have to use a book, be careful and make sure what you're looking at is actually a book and not an article. Then you use your topic. In this case, instead of social media, I'm going to use civil rights. You pick a book, you take a look at the book. And if you like it, you can usually email yourself pages from that book. You can't email the entire thing or download the entire thing because the publishers won't allow the library to do that. This is a problem with copyright. Um, so I'll show you how you can email yourself a few pages. And if you get stuck, always ask us on chat. So what does this look like when you decide to do it? Again, to get to the library homepage, mouse over student services, click on the library. And then once you're here, you're going to head into databases. And the second link is for databases that are primarily or substantively ebooks. And I'm going to pick the first one, which is EBSCO ebook collection. This is our largest ebook collection. And everything in here is electronic, so you don't need to worry about not being able to get hold of it. So my topic is civil rights. And I'm going to narrow that down a little bit because this is a global collection. I want it to be in the United States. Notice I'm not putting US because then it thinks you mean us and not US. Okay. Then I search that out and I get 232 books. So I can go over here to the left and I can say, well, I'm really interested in maybe the last 10 years or so. So I can move the publication date and just take a look at the last 10 years. And that cuts it down a couple of hundred. I can also go down here and I can say, I wanna take a look at subject. These are subject headings, which means they're subjects that librarians have assigned to the book saying this book is about this topic. So if you can find a subject that really describes your topic, you're in pretty good shape. So if I click down on this and I click show more, it will give me a listing of all of the subject headings assigned to this 88 books and the number of books about that subject. So I'm going to click on the first one just to show you how it works. Now in two limits, date and subject, I've gone from nearly 300 books to five. So you can actually narrow yourself all the way out of options. If that happens, you can take some of these off and broaden your search back again here on the left-hand side of your screen. So I'm going to pick one. Civil Rights Movement, People and Perspectives. This is Perspectives in so American Social History series. So I know the series is all about what I'm looking for. And when I click on that, it gives me information about the book. It tells me subject headings information about what this book is actually about, tells me the categories under which it falls, quotes some various parts of the books that actually use my specific search terms, and shows me the table of contents. So if I decide I'm really interested in student activists, I can click on this, and it will go directly to that chapter in the book. I can scroll through and read it. And maybe I decide I really want this page. I can go up here along the top and I can save the pages, email them to myself, print them out, get a citation for them. Remember, if you get a citation from a database, fix it before you put it in your paper. There's a robot writing this citation and sometimes they miss things. You don't wanna have points taken off of your paper because the robot screwed up your citation. You can also add it to your Google Drive, right? So if I decide I'm going to put this into a digital essay, so I need it in email so that I can have that copy I can take my, my quotes from, 
I email pages up here and it will tell me the publisher of this book limits me to 100 pages. Of those, this chapter is 20 pages long. I could also just send the current page or say I want this photograph and I also want the text after it. I can say, give me the current page and the next two pages. Then if my teacher requires MLA citation and for English one they do, over here on citation format, you can tell it I need a robots attempt at an MLA citation. Email it to myself. You can send this to any email. It doesn't have to go to your SMC email address, but whichever email you send it to, make sure you spell it right. Give it some kind of a subject. I'm going to say English one because I'm pretending that that is my class. Never send it in plain text format and email the PDF off. What you get at that point in your email is all of the information from this detailed record, the robots attempted citation, and attached to it a PDF of those three pages. I have a chat question, so I'm going to take a look at that. What citation style is used in ebooks? This is private, but I'm actually going to share it. I apologize because I think it's important. Um, you can use any citation style for any resource, but it depends on your class. So if I'm in a history class and I'm doing this, I'll probably use APA and my teacher will tell me that. And the books and the articles and the videos and the interviews will all be in APA. If I'm in an English one class, the books and the videos and the articles and the interviews will all be in MLA. So it's determined by the discipline of your class. Good question. So heading back, this is how you find books. And if I want to find more, I can either go back to my result list or I can refine my search, change words, add or change things here and find more books. If you have any questions about finding eBooks, please put them in chat and I'll continue on to the next part of your magical mystery research tour, which is periodicals and periodicals are anything published regularly. You publish a book today, you publish it again in five years, it's either a reprint and the content has not changed, or it's a new edition and the content has changed. But either way, it's a different book. You publish the LA Times today, you publish it every day for the next five years, it's still the LA Times. Okay. There are two general categories of periodicals, popular and academic. Popular periodicals are um, things like newspapers and magazines that focus on current events, a little bit of historical perspective, but really they're focused on a snapshot of today, what's happening right now. They are written by reporters who are not experts in that field, although they may have written in it for a very long time. And they write those stories for everyone to read using colloquial everyday language. Um, and usually the about the hmm, middle school to early high school reading level. And the reason for that is they want everybody be, to be able to quickly and easily understand and absorb the news. Okay. The other kind of periodical and one you'll be using a lot in college are academic journals and they are different for popular literally in every way. They are um, peer reviewed, which means they go through a review process before they're published. Um, they are written by researchers in a discipline for other researchers in a discipline, which means if you are not a researcher in that discipline, they can be a little bit confusing to try to read. Um, readers are expected to understand graduate level language specific to that discipline and to not expect very much background. They're expected to already know the basics about the topic so the researcher can just dive into what's new and exciting in their research. One is not better than the other at this level. They are different. They serve different needs. So follow your instructor's advice and requirements when it comes to what you use in your essays. For example, if I'm in English one, my professor might say you have to have five articles and at least three of them have to be scholarly. I know at that point, the other two might be a newspaper or a magazine or a report, but at least three of them have to be journal articles and probably better if more were journal articles. Okay. Okay. 
Now, because you're looking for articles instead of books, when you go searching for them, you can get a ton of articles. Instead of like 285, like we did with the books, we could get 200,000. So when you go into the database, you have to be particular with your limiters. You have to limit your search in a specific way so that you get what you want and what you need and not just everything, right? So you're going to limit to date, to format, and format de determines date. You want to limit it to full text, so make sure you actually get the article and not just the information about the article. And like with the book, you might want to limit to subject as well if you have a very broad subject. Um, use the abstract when you're searching, and this goes back to what I said at the beginning about don't read everything when you find it. Read through, find the abstract, which is the author supplied summary of that article that tells you what the author thinks is important about it. If it looks good, mail it to yourself, go to the next one. Looks good, mail it to yourself, go to the next one. Doesn't look good, skip it, go to the next one. And do that for two or three different databases. Okay. Now I mentioned earlier that uh, date is determined by format. That's because of the content. Um, popular things like newspapers and magazines, the news changes. So you want the most current story. So depending on the story that's being covered for newspapers, you may only go back a week or you may go back six months. For a magazine, you may only go back six months or you may go back two years. But for a journal, because it goes through the peer review process and it takes that time to sort of test the information and fix the information. Um, usually you wanna go back about maybe five years. If it's a more current topic like technology or medicine or law, maybe three years. If it's one that could use a broader perspective like literature or philosophy or history, maybe go back 10 years. Always follow your teacher's um, instruction in this one because they're the discipline expert and they're the one you're writing for. So you wanna make sure that you stay within their guidelines. So here's a little graphic of exactly how you find specific databases to search. I'll give you a second to take a look at that. We are going to be doing this for a few different databases. That's actually pretty much the entire second half of the workshop. We go back to the library homepage, we click on databases, only this time instead of ebooks, we're going to pick all databases. And then we're going to go through and the databases are either listed by discipline, I'll show you that, or they're listed for all databases alphabetically by title with a short description of what is covered by that database. And then you dive in, you do some searching, you find some articles, you pull out, you pick a different database, you do it again until you find twice your minimum required articles. And this is laying that out very specifically. Our sample search is going to go into three databases. I'm going to look at JSTOR and Academic Search Premier, both for scholarly or peer reviewed journals and US News Stream to find current events because there are going to be a lot on this topic, okay? So what does that look like when I actually do it? Pardon me for just a moment. That was an emergency alert for the curfew in Culver City. So heading back in to the Santa Monica College library homepage, mousing over student services and clicking on the library. Say I wanna start an academic search premiere. It's our broadest database. Once I get to the library, I click on databases and from databases, instead of eBooks, I click on all databases. My other option would be say I'm in a business class and then I need to find out about Amazon. I can go into business or I want to find out about coronavirus. I can go into health sciences. <coughs> Excuse me. Apropos. Or I want to find out about um, Maya Angelou. I can go into literature. Or I want to find out about homelessness. I can go into social sciences. Or I want to find out about ocean pollution. I can go into science. <clears throat> These database um, discipline lists do not list all of the databases. They only list the databases that are specific to that topic or more general databases that have a lot of information on that topic. So I'm going to start in all databases because it covers everything. And you'll notice as you scroll down, we have everything from academic search to 
physiology, to history, to fashion, to country watch, to biographies, to drama, to film, to health, and on and on and on. So I'm going to start an academic search. And you'll notice this database looks an awful lot like the ebooks collection. That's because it's published by the same people. EBSCOhost publishes a lot of our databases. And you can always tell which database you're in right up on top of the search fields. It will tell you which database you're in. So I'm going to look for civil rights in the United States. And I'm going to start with the same search we did with the books to show you the difference in the results you get when you look for articles. Instead of 288, I got over 49,000. Way too many. When I first look at them, I notice full text is already clicked. So everything I get should actually be an article. Some of these are periodicals. And in these databases, periodical means popular. So it is not academic. It's a newspaper or a magazine or a report, but it's not scholarly. If it's scholarly, it'll tell me so. So right off the bat, I may say, well, my teacher wants me to use journals, so I'm going to restrict it to just journals. That just took out 38,000 hits, but I still have over 11,000, which is you know, about 10,580 more than I want. So the next thing I take a look at, just like with the books, the dates. I am less interested in information that happened in 1889 and more interested in information that's going on now. So this being a scholarly journal article, I'm going to go for like the last five years. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If it's too small a date area, click on show more. And you can also do that manually here. Say, okay, I'm looking for full text to scholarly journals between 2015 and 2020. And then you search that out. And it just cut out about another 8,000, still too many. So at this point, I have a couple of options. I can go up to the top and I can add a third search term. Um, that will start it over in the database and then I'll have to re-add my date limiter and my format limiter. I could also head down here and say, I really want academic journals. Yes, indeed, database, give me journals. And I can scroll down and you have two subjects listed, which can be confusing. Subject thesaurus term actually makes your search bigger because it's words that mean the same as your words. Instead, you want to make it more narrow and you want to go to your subject terms. Click show more. Scroll down until you find something that looks interesting to you. Maybe the American Civil Rights Movement. Update that. You can pick more than one. And in three steps, I've gone from over 49,000 to 25. So again, be careful with your limiters. Once you see something that you like, and I'll just pick this one. Um, this is in the Journal of American History from March of 2019. It's a 27 page article. So that tells me it's slant. It tells me it's currency. It tells me how long it is. So I can tell a bit about it before I even click on it. And then when I click on it, just like the book, it goes directly to the article, tells me in the abstract if this is useful or not. I can read it over here in the PDF, but remember I'm looking for a lot of articles, so I'm not gonna read it as I see it. Instead, I'm gonna go over here and I have a couple of options. I can email it, save it, cite it. I can add it to my Google Drive. Just to show you what it looks like, I'm going to show you site. Now, even the database says fix it before you put it in your paper. So please do that. And your instructor should give you examples of how they want your, your citations to look. It's alphabetical by citation format. So since we're not in Brazil, we're going to leave the Brazilian standards. Scroll on down to the Modern Language Association. And it gives you a relatively decent attempt at a citation. 
When you copy and paste this into your paper, you're going to lose all your formatting. Plus, it's in the wrong font. So you will want to fix it before you add it to your citations. When I email it to myself, unlike the book where the publisher only allowed me to mail a certain number of pages, it doesn't matter how long your article is, when you email it to yourself, you're going to get the entire article. So I send it to myself. I give it a subject just so I know what it is. I do not send it in plain text format. And over here on the right, I change the citation format to MLA, so that will be in my email, and I send it off. To continue, if I want to find more articles, I either go back to my result list or I refine my search and see if there's a different search term that I want to use. So that's one database. Add to your opposing viewpoints where you found your topic. Now, if I decide I need to do some other databases as well, which I hope you do, you can go back into all databases. And now I'm going to show you JSTOR. The reason why I picked these three databases, besides the fact that they're all good sources, is they all have very different interfaces. So, <clears throat> if I'm looking for civil rights, and I'm looking for them in the United States, I want to ensure here that it is content I can access, not everything, just the stuff I can actually read. And before I go any further, I might want to add some things. I want to look for articles. I'm not looking for book reviews. I'm not looking for pamphlets. I'm not looking for miscellaneous reports. I want articles. I want them to be in a language both I and my instructor can read. And I really want them to be maybe the last five years. So if I say 2015, to 2020. So I can do a little bit of that limiting before I even do my search. And that's really all I would do at this point. I search it out and I get 5,000 articles. Just like in EBSCO, you can also pick subject, but this subject is a little bit different. This subject is the discipline of the journals the articles are in. So if what I'm really interested in and I'm going to show more so we can take a look at them, is criminal justice, or is economics, or is education, or is women's studies, or is history, labor, law. I can pick peace and conflict studies. I can pick specific topics, and these topics are not of the articles. They're of the journals the articles are published in. So if I decide what I'm really interested in is American Indian studies or African American studies, I can pick one of those. And when I click them, this takes me from 53 articles to 193. Still a few too many. So I can go again. Notice some of these, even though you asked for articles, it still indexes. I can at this time, if I'd like, add something to my search and say, and protest. If I search it again, and I've not done this search, so we'll see how it works. Notice how it pops all the way back out to 44,000. That's because you lose all of your limiters again. So you have to go back again and you have to say 2015 to 2020, a subject, journals, not book chapters, down to 79. So I can take a look and start seeing what I find. Okay. And just picking one to show you how it works. This looks very interesting. Actually, this is in African American education, civil rights and black power in the Journal of African American history. It's about a six page article. And it is on these topics student protests, political campaigns, college students, children. I can, at this point, download the PDF. I can ask for a citation, or I can take a look at it. And when I click on the actual title, 
Unlike EBSCO, where it takes you to the entire article, it gives it to me one page at a time. So this database is actually set up so you are supposed to read it as you go. If I read through this and I read the first page and it looks interesting, I download the PDF. If it doesn't look so interesting, I skip it and I go to the next thing. And the reason why I do that again is to keep my brain in search mode and not in understanding and writing mode. This one doesn't allow you to email quite like the others do, but you can download it to your device. Okay. And over here on the left hand side, it will give you information about the item and help you cite it. There are formatting problems here, but it has all of the information that you need, it looks like. So again, you copy it, put it in your paper, fix it. Now the last database that I'm going to show you is news articles. So I'll close some of these so I don't get lost. So heading back into all databases, if I'm looking for current events on a very timely topic, I will scroll all the way down to the bottom and the next to the last link is US News Stream. Now why would I go to US News Stream instead of say um, LATimes.com? Well, Time and money. If you go to the individual news sites, they will request you to subscribe to them, of course. As an SMC student, you have a subscription to the LA Times. Once you wade through all the pop-ups and take the next four hours going through all the stories, you realize you've only looked at the LA Times. If you go to US News Stream, with one search, you can look at the 10 major national newspapers from New York to Washington to Atlanta to Boston to LA. One search several regional and local newspapers. It gives you help with your citation and it delivers you the article in a format you can you know, cite it, you can quote from it, you can download it, you can email it to yourself. So I recommend using US News Stream because it makes you an efficient researcher and doesn't require you to subscribe to every newspaper in the US. Notice again, brand new interface. So if I say civil rights, and this one gives me options and the United States. I'm going to add a row and add protests, my new term. This one is not defaulted to full text. So make sure you click that because you actually want to get the article. And I'm going to search it out and see what I get. And when I do that, I get over 103,000 hits because this database covers current events and this is very current. I have a chat question, so I'm going to look at that quickly. Yes, the recording of this workshop um, will be up on our YouTube channel as soon as I can get the captions transcribed. So probably tomorrow morning. Okay. <clears throat> now, look at all the different source types it gives you. It gives you reports and trade journals, which are kind of like newspapers for specific industries, magazines, newspapers, audios, podcasts, videos. I'm interested in newspapers, so I click on that. That cuts it in half, but I still have 57,000 articles, way too many. So I say, um, wow, I'm really not looking at the 1970s right now. I'm looking at Did it work? Yes, it did. I'm looking at the last six months. And suddenly in two hits, I've gone from 103,000 to 14,000. Still too many. So I might narrow it down even further. And I might say, okay, in the last week, what has happened? And I get 250 results. At that point, if I'd like to, I can also say, well, I'm interested in local results, so I want my publication to be the Los Angeles Times. This is a way to use the database to get those local results presented to you. And then when I find, I go through here, I say, what looks interesting? Oh, this looks interesting. This is from June 2nd, 2020. The right to protest is sacred. This looks to me like an opinion piece, but it might be quite interesting. I click on it. 
Now, this database has newspaper articles from about 25 years ago all the way up to today's paper. So it is literally updated daily. Um, so the reason why they can do that is because they don't have PDFs, they type it in, which means the one thing you probably would want to take a look at for those videos or to look on the web for are images, graphics. But for the actual text for the, for the news, that's here. Over here, on related items, it will give you other news reports that are related to this one in some way. And it will give you options of other search terms that you can add to make your, to your search even more specific. So if I wasn't just looking in the LA Times and I had 250 articles, I could add civil disobedience. I could add demonstrations and protests and make my subject specific to what I need for my research. If I decide I like this over here on the right hand side, I can download that PDF. <coughs> I can cite it, email it, and save it to Google Drive, save it to my Microsoft OneDrive, which you have access via Canvas, etc. Okay. Now I'm going to show you email because this email is different than the other ones. When you click on this email, even though newspapers don't have bibliographic citations, the only way to get the database to send you its attempt at a citation is to ask it to include those bibliographic citations. It's a weird database, but it's a good one. I click here and I scroll down to the most current MLA that it will give me. I tell it where to send it. I change its subject. The default really doesn't work for me. And I click continue to send it off. Okay. And then to get back to my results, that's exactly what I click. Now in the course of this search, I have shown you how to use opposing viewpoints to try to figure out a topic, um, how to use an ebook database to try to find a book, how to search JSTOR and academic search to find academic journal articles, and how to search US Newsstream to find news articles. This is the basics of research. You adapt this depending on your topic, depending on the requirements of your class, depending on what your teacher wants you to do, depending on your own interests. As you go through this process, they call it research for a reason. So as you go through this process, if you get stuck, ask us on the library homepage at Ask a Librarian. And many of our um, databases also have it embedded, but you'll always find it on the library homepage. We will help you get unstuck because oftentimes you're in the right database, but maybe not quite using the best search terms, or you have really good search terms, but you're looking in not the best database for that search. And we have 40 some odd databases. So let us help you find the right place to look and the right things to look for to answer your research questions. So I'm going to stop sharing at this point and see if anybody has any questions. Looks like we got them all as we went. I have a question. Yes. Yeah, I was wondering what is the secret word for like this live workshop participants? Very good question. And I didn't put that in there because I was going to see if anybody noticed. So 10 points to you. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Sorry. The secret word for this today is unicorn. Uh -huh. Because the perfect easy research is a unicorn. Really pretty doesn't really exist. Research is the work. So your search term or your um, extra credit term today is unicorn. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Okay, I hope you that everyone got something useful out of this. Um, if you're an instructor, I hope that you will share this with your students. Um, and if you're a student, I hope you will find good guidance from this when you go on your research path. Um, I wish yeah, you it was very really helpful. Excellent. Mm, thank you. Thank yes, you. thank you. Thank you. I wish you the very best um, with your research. Please stay safe and be well. You thank too. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.